Hey guys, this is Dion, and today, I decided to do something stupid. Today, I'm taking on Pokemon Fire Red only using shiny Pokemon. In Generation 3, the odds of encountering a shiny Pokemon is 1 in 8,192. Of course, that means shiny Pokemon are extremely rare. So rare, in fact, that most people never have actually caught a shiny Pokemon before. With that being said, I decided to take it upon myself to do an entire playthrough with only shiny Pokemon. So today, we're gonna be figuring out, can I beat Pokemon Fire Red with only shiny Pokemon? Pokemon? The answer is yes, in case that wasn't obvious. But how did I do it? What mods did I use, and how long did it take? Sit back, relax, grab yourself a crystal Pepsi, and let's find out together. The rules for this run are pretty simple. I could only use shiny Pokemon in battle. I cannot use items in battle, but held items are okay. And last but not least, have fun. But with all that out of the way, I really hope you guys enjoy, and let's get into it. First things first, I need to choose my starter. Now, I could do this entire game with one Pokemon, as I've probably done it 100 times at this point, but that would make for a boring video. So just for clarification, I will not be doing that. So the starter options are Bubble Sword, Charmander, and Squirtle. And based on nothing but purely what I think will make this run easier, I end up settling with Squirtle. Squirtle's typing, moveset, and stats are better than the alternatives that are offered, especially when Squirtle evolves in the Cannon Turtle. So, it's reset time. With speed up, I was able to average around 11 resets a minute. Knowing that the odds on this game is 1 in 8192, I knew I would be here for a while. Overall, I don't know exactly how long it took me to find a shiny, but it was around 8 hours total. Assuming I reset the game 11 times a minute every time, I ended up resetting roughly 5,280 times before I found my shiny. This was lucky knowing I wasn't at full odds yet, but since I spent around 8 hours of my life doing nothing but watching YouTube videos while resetting, I still feel like a loser. Now, of course, this was a static encounter, meaning I knew what I was going to get. And those types of encounters are what I'm going to be going for. I'd rather spend hours of my time resetting for a Pokemon knowing it's good rather than running around in tall grass forever just to find a shiny Rattata. No hate to the Focus Ash Endeavor Rattatas out there, you're scary as heck, but for this run in particular, it's the easiest method for me to guarantee a good Pokemon. There's nothing I want to hunt from here to Brock's gym, so let's get into it. Brock, hence the name, has rock type Pokemon. Since we have a water type, this gym should be easy. Geodude barely has a level advantage here, but I have Bubble, and it's almost enough for one at KO, and one more is enough to take him out. Next out is Onyx at level 14, and since we are a turtle, Onyx ends up out speeding and hits me with a tackle, but doesn't do almost any damage as I go for bubble one more time to take it out, and just like that, I end up defeating Brock. I knew we were going to have an easy time with Brock, because as long as you choose Squirtle, you should never have an issue with Brock. But now, with Brock out of the way, already, it's time for our next team member. For a whopping $500, you're able to purchase a Magikarp from this guy in the Poké Center outside of Mount Moon. This one was rough. Not only do I have to press A a ton, I have to go to my party, go down a slot, press summary, just to see if it was a shiny. This is dumb, I hate this, please help me. It took probably a week of off again, on again resetting. I lost track of how long this one took, I even started to get worried that this Magikarp couldn't be shiny, but I found a YouTube video of a guy finding one with the help of three Game Boys. So I knew it was possible, but this was gonna take forever. But do you know what doesn't take forever, and actually pretty easy? Installing and using Atlas VPN. What is a VPN though? Well, with Atlas VPN, it protects your online security. All the data your internet service provider actually gets from you can be sold to online advertisers to try to cater to you in some pretty weird ways. Atlas VPN can also stop governments from knowing exactly what you look at. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge Black Friday discount. It means you could get a 3 year subscription for just $139 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. And on top of that, they're adding three free months. Time is running out on this deal, so make sure to go click the link in the description below. Personally, what I use Atlas VPN for is unrestricted Netflix access. There are a ton of shows in the US I just can't watch because they're region locked, but I'm able to change my location to the UK, and just like that, I have a ton more options. So what are you waiting for, guys? Like, seriously, you won't find a better deal than this on the Black Friday deal. You get a three-year subscription for just $1.39 a month. Plus, you also get three months free, and that comes with a 30 day money back guarantee which is just crazy if you're curious at all about atlas vpn make sure to click my link down in the description below and thanks a ton for atlas vpn for sponsoring this video now back to the hunt for the golden fish and i found it she's beautiful too bad once she evolves it's the least rare shiny pokemon in the world Thanks, Game Freak. The only way to level up Magikarp at this point is to switch train, meaning I probably won't have a Gyarados for a while unless I want to spend even more time of my life getting this fish to level 20. For now, it'll just have the way. Time to make my way through Mount Moon. After defeating a Zubat, Squirtle evolves into Wartortle. This is going to be very helpful for Misty once Wartortle learns Bite. Bite is a super effective move against Misty's best Pokemon, Starmie. And in this game, Bite is a special move, so it's the best move we'll have access to for Gym 2. In Mount Moon, 
soon, I end up defeating a super nerd, and I end up choosing the Helix Fossil, as it's best for the YouTube algorithm. Or, it used to be at least. At this point, I realize I really only have one Pokemon. That, of course, being Wartortle. I know I can't beat Misty with one Pokemon at this level, so I decided to grind up for a bit. Eventually, I learned Bite and switched to Magikarp up a few levels as well, and before I know it, Wartortle's at level 25. If we don't get confused by Water Pulse, this battle should be easy. Misty leads off with a Star U, which isn't scary at all. I end up going for a Bite, which does a lot of damage as she retaliates with a Water Pulse, luckily not confusing me. Next turn, one more Bite is enough to take it out. Next out is Starmie, Misty's supposed A. I say this because Starmie is part Psychic. It's going to be taking a lot more damage from Bite. It does outspeed and hits me with a Swift, but it really doesn't do anything as I go for Bite and do massive damage. Starmie goes for Swift again as I finish it off with just one more Bite. And that was extremely easy. The thing I have to worry about now is the rival fight. Of course, our rival chose a starter that is strong against the one you chose, meaning he'll have a Bulbasaur with Vine Whip and Sleep Powder. So, he'll have a huge advantage since the team consists of only two water types. Not to mention that one of the water types is, uh, completely useless right now. Our rival leads off with Pidgeotto at level 17 who hits us with a sand attack but then goes down to a couple of water guns. I do end up switching out here just to get rid of the debuffs as Magikarp unfortunately goes down. Bulbasaur ends up missing both of his Sleep Powders so we're easily able to take him down with three bites and finish off the rest of his team pretty easily. Once Magikarp evolves, we definitely won't only have to rely on Wartortle, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Next, it's time to help Bill, and once I do, he gives me a ticket to the SSN, and it's time to fight our rival again. We literally just fought this guy, <laughs> leave me alone. I lead with Magikarp to get some EXP, and I end up going for Water Gun, but of course Pidgeotto ends up going for Sand Attack, so I end up switching again to get rid of the debuffs to take him out the next turn with Water Gun. Next up is Ivysaur, and this thing's an absolute threat as it hits me with Elite Seed and then Sleep Powder, but luckily I end up waking the turn before I die to finish him off with a bite, and I also end up finishing Raticate off with one Water Gun, R.A.P., and the same thing happens to Kadabra. That was literally my first attempt, I just got super lucky with that Ivysaur, and I definitely didn't expect that one to happen, especially the first attempt. On the bright side, my Magikarp's almost at level 20 now, so soon he won't be a Magikarp, but the bad news is we have an Electric-type gym up next, which is going to be an issue. Once Magikarp is at level 19, I give it the rare candy I picked up in Mount Moon to get to level 20. This this thing looks awesome. Too bad it's four times a week to electric type moves, and that's the next gym. At this point, I don't know how far away I am level-wise to beat Surge, so I go ahead and try just to see how far I could get. I lead off with Gyarados just to try to get a little bit of damage off before I actually end up going down, and that's exactly what ends up happening. My last usable team member is a War Turtle, and luckily it's able to finish off the Voltorb with a bite. Next out is Pikachu, and luckily that gets one shot with a bite, and last up is the Raichu at level 24. Bite does an okay amount of damage, but unfortunately Raichu ends up paralyzing me and then starts to set up double teams and then goes for shockwave and this just really wasn't a good combination but somehow i managed to pull through and take down the raichu i have no clue how that ended up happening but hey, I'm not complaining. As soon as you get out of Rock Tunnel, you could actually go a lot of different places. It's really up to you, but I decided to go to the Pokemon Tower to take on my rival. Gyarados at this point knows Dragon Rage, and it does just over half HP to Pidgeotto, so once I actually land it twice, it ends up going down. My rival then sends out his own Gerardos, and I end up going for a bite here, luckily getting a critical hit, but he lands a critical thrash, basically making it even, although my War Turtle does end up going down. I send out my own Gerardos here to finish off the Gyarados with a tackle, since he was already at a very low amount amount of HP. Next out is Growlithe, and since Misty did give me the Water Pulse TM, I ended up teaching that to Gyarados, so I'm able to use it in this battle, and Growlithe ends up taking itself out once it was confused. Next out is Kadabra, and I end up going for a bite, it flinches, and then I go for another bite to take it out, and that just leaves his last Pokemon, Ivysaur. For Ivysaur, I end up going for Dragon Rage, which does over half, which obviously means I could just use two of these to take it out. Gosh, switch training this thing was absolutely awful, but obviously it was worth it in the end. Next, I make my way to Celadon City, where I'll try and find my next team member. I had two options. I could get enough coins to shiny up Pokemon from the game corner, but I didn't have enough money for that, so I decided to hunt Eevee. Eevee is another static encounter, but it's able to evolve into a lot of things, meaning I could potentially try and get an electric immunity from Jolteon. It would definitely help out balance the electric weakness I have on my team. This shiny took a while to find. Now, I'll be honest, I kind of got discouraged with this one, and I didn't really hunt a couple hours a day while watching YouTube videos like I should have, so this took a lot longer than it needed to. I'm literally talking about two weeks. <laughs> yeah, two weeks. With speed up. I'm never doing this again. Unless, you know, you subscribe. You know, just, just, just subscribe. All jokes aside though, that's how I know you want more content like this. So if you do want to see more, please God, make that red button turn gray. And after two weeks, two whole weeks, I finally got my shiny Eevee. And dude, shiny Eevee looks so cool. Too bad I'm about to completely ruin the aesthetic of this mon by shoving a thunderstone on it and making a green 
Jolteon. Yeah. Next, I decided to take on Erika, who uses grass types, and we have nothing but two water types and an electric type, so the best bet we have here is to use Dragon Rage with Gyarados. This battle is really annoying as Victory Bell just loves going for Giga Drain, Stun Spore, and then gets healed up with Hyper Potion, so I just continue to spam Bite and Dragon Rage as much as possible until it goes down. At level 30, for some reason, Gyarados wants to learn Layer, which is kind of weird since it's a really bad move, so I say no, of course, and use Dragon Rage a couple times on Tangla to take it out, but not before it poisons me. Last out is Vioplume, and I just end up going for Dragon Rage here because it's obviously the best move Gyarados has. Vileplume ends up taking down Gyarados with a couple of Giga Drains, and I send out War Turtle next. Gyarados was able to whittle away Vileplume's HP, so War Turtle was able to come in here and finish the job with only one bite. Well, now with Surge and Erika out of the way, I honestly don't think we'll have any more problems with any other gym leaders considering our mons are pretty good against their types. Now it's time to take on Giovanni and the Rocket Hideout. Honestly, the Giovanni fight is way easier than the Erika fight. He has two rock types that are weak to water. First out is Onyx at level level 25, so I end up going for Water Pulse for an easy one-hit KO. Next out is Rhyhorn, who is four times weak to water, so I end up going for Water Pulse again for another one-hit KO, and last up is the Kangaskhan, which is really the only thing that can do damage to my team. I end up going for Dragon Rage here on Kangaskhan as it hits me with a Mega Punch, and then a Tail Whip instead of another Mega Punch, which was really weird, because I was just able to take it down with another Dragon Rage. Dang, I have no idea who the 8th Gym Leader is, but if he battles anything like Giovanni, we're definitely going to be in for an easy time. Next, I decide to take on Koga, but before I do, I pick up the HM for Surf inside of the Safari Zone, that way both my Water Mons could have some pretty strong moves to use against him. Coming into this battle, I do have a level 38 Blast Toys, so I'm feeling kind of comfortable about this one. I lead off with Jolteon to take down the first Coughing, and next out is Muck, which is the Mon that we're definitely gonna have the most trouble with. My best move against Muck here is just to spam Dragon Rage, and unfortunately for me, that would normally work out, but Koka has a ton of Hyper Potions. I can't even use Potions in battle, so this is definitely unfair. Eventually, I do end up going down to a Sludge, so I send out Jolteon on next. I try to take down Muck with a Shockwave, but of course he gets healed up with another Super Potion. Muck keeps going for Minimize, but Shockwave can't miss, so I just continue to go for that, but unfortunately I do end up going down to a Sludge. Last out for me is Blastoise at level 37, and I end up going for a Surf, missing the first time, but the second one connects to take it out. Next out for Koga is Coughing, and that thing ends up going down with only one Surf, and last up is Weezing at level 43. Luckily, I don't end up missing any of my Surfs, as I'm able to take down the Weezing with only two Surfs. Overall, Surf made this battle a lot easier, and I'm not sure I could have done it without it. Now it's time for Sylphco. Next up is my rival in Sylphco, and with the help of Jolteon, I was easily able to destroy his first two Pokemon, being Pidgeot and Gyarados. Next out is Growlithe, and I actually end up getting a critical hit Shockwave, which is enough for one at KO, which is pretty funny, considering Jolteon has just destroyed this team so far. Next out is Alakazam, and two Shockwaves are almost enough to take this thing out, as I finish it off with a Quick Attack, even though it did set up Future Sight. That thing is coming eventually. No, I don't want to learn Pin Missile, what the heck. Last out is Venusaur. Obviously, Jolteon can't do almost anything the Venusaur here, and ends up going down, but I'm able to use Gyarados and Blastoise to eventually whittle this thing down. Since I easily defeated my rival, I thought Giovanni was going to be equally as easy, if not easier, and I was right. Giovanni absolutely got destroyed by Blastoise. This Giovanni battle was absolutely a joke, that's why I'm not showing it, but trust me, you're not missing anything. Next, I decided to take on Sabrina, which actually was some trouble. First out's Kadabra, so I just end up spamming Bite for an easy KO, and next up is Mr. Mime, who actually ends up surviving after going for a Calm Mind. Even though it gets healed up, it eventually does end up going down the Surf, and so does Venomoth. This Alakazam caused me a lot of trouble, but luckily this time I ended up getting a critical hit, so it went down pretty easy. And with that, Sabrina is now out of the way, and now it's time for Blaine. I wonder if we're gonna have a hard time with Blaine. Put your guesses in the comments below. Unfortunately, there's not much to talk about in this battle. I set up Rain Dance, and then I use Surf. That's it. That's the whole battle. Gyarados couldn't even do this good because it's a physical attack error, so this is just another prime reason of why I chose Blastoise. And now that Blaine's out of the way, <laughs> that rhymed, it's time for the 8th and final gym leader, Giovanni. Giovanni is a ground type gym leader, meaning that, again, we will not have any issues here. Giovanni leads off with a Rhyhorn at level 45, and that thing easily ends up going down to only one Surf. Next out is Dugtrio at level 42, and I somehow end up actually outspeeding taking it out with one Surf, and next up is Nidoqueen at level 44, who also goes down to one Surf. Next out is Nidoking, and surprise, surprise, I end up going for Surf once again for an easy one-hit KO. That was a critical hit too, which definitely mattered. And last out is another Rhyhorn at level 50, who obviously goes down to one four times super effective Surf, and just like that, we earn the easiest 8th and final gym badge 
ever. The rival fight this time around before Victory Road definitely was more difficult. Venusaur is extremely strong against my ace, but luckily this time I'm barely able to squeak by with a victory. But I'm sure that's not the last we'll be seeing of him. Looking at my team, having three mons for the Elite Four is definitely not a good thing, but I did pick up some pretty good TMs from the game corner, so that definitely should help. Ice Beam on Blastoise is going to be very valuable. And the moveset on Gyarados is kind of a lost cause. I didn't really know what to do with this thing because I thought it learned Thrash at like level 48, but that's not at all what happened. Anyway, time for the Elite Four. Let's get into it. First up is Lorelei, another great reason why I chose to evolve Eevee into Jolteon. First out for Lorelei is a Dugong at level 52, and I just end up going for a Thunderbolt, which is actually almost enough for a one-hit KO as it goes for a safeguard, and then gets healed up with a Forest Door. I instantly use Thunderbolt once again, and then one more to take it out. Next out is Cloyster. Now, this thing has really high defense, but almost no special defense, so one Thunderbolt is enough for one shot. Next up is Slowbar, who has Amnesia, so that is super scary to deal with, especially since Thunderbolt was enough for one shot, but for some reason it doesn't get healed up this turn and I'm just able to take it out the next. Next out is Lapras and I absolutely need to take this thing down with Jolteon because my other two are basically useless against this thing. It has a Citrus Berry and luckily it doesn't heal it up to the point where I need three Thunderbolts instead of two. Next out is Jinx and this thing loves to use Lovely Kiss which puts your Pokemon to sleep so I put a Chesto Berry on beforehand. This lets me get off two Thunderbolts before I end up getting put back to sleep and then it gets healed up with a full Restore which is pretty annoying. Jolteon then gets hit with Attract which is even more annoying as it gets taken out with a critical ice punch the next turn. Oh my gosh, Jolteon just got destroyed. As soon as I sent Blastoise in, I got hit with an Attract, and then an Ice Punch, and then a Lovely Kiss which put me to sleep, so this was getting really annoying, so I just ended up switching out into Gyarados. Since Jinx didn't get healed up last turn, that means she's out of four restores, and I'm able to take it down with an Earthquake. Well, that was super annoying, and I'm glad that's over. Next up is Bruno, and this one went pretty well. Bruno leads off with Onyx at level 51, so I end up going for a Surf for an easy one-hit KO. Next out is Hitmonchan at level 53, and I try to whittle this thing down with the Surf, but unfortunately I was just short of being able to take it out with an Earthquake as it gets healed up with a full restore. Luckily the next Earthquake was enough to take it out. Crits are fair and balanced. What could possibly be better than one critical hit? Well, two critical hits as it does a massive amount of damage to the champ and makes him eat his berry right away. Unfortunately Rock Tomb is enough to take me down since it did go for bulk up twice, but it's at the point where Jolteon's able to come in and take it out with a Thunderbolt. Next out is Onyx, so I decide to switch out into Blastoise here as it hits me with an Earthquake, not doing too much damage as I'm able to take it down with the Surf. And last out is Hitmonlee, and Surf does just about half as I get hit with a Brick Break, one more Surf is enough to take it out, and just like that, that is how you defeat Bruno with a team of only three Shinies. Next up is Agatha. Agatha leads off with Gengar, as I lead off with my Cannon Turtle, and I end up going for a Rain Dance as I get hit with a Confuse Ray. Every time I connect with the Surf, it does a lot of damage, and even though Agatha ends up healing up Gengar here with the full Restore, I'm still confident and easily able to take this thing out, and that's exactly what ends up happening. Next out is Golbat, but I don't really mind because I have Ice Beam, and I'm able to take it down with the Surf the next turn. Next up is Arbok, so I end up switching out here to Gyarados because it has Earthquake. Earthquake is almost enough for a one hit KO here, but it barely hangs on and hits me with a Screech as I take it down with Earthquake the next turn. Next out is Agatha's other Gengar at level 58, so I end up switching out here into Jolteon as Gengar misses two Hypnosis, I get off a nice Thunderbolt, and then eventually fall asleep. I wake up only after one turn and get another Thunderbolt off, and then it gets held up with a full Restore, and eventually I end up going down to a Shadow Ball. Next, I send out Blastoise to use Surf to take down the Gengar, and I'm able to one shot the Haunter. Overall, that was a pretty fun battle, but now with that out of the way, next up is Lance. Lance leads off with Gyarados, so I lead off with Jolteon, and I just go for a Thunderbolt for an easy one hit KO, as next up are the two Dragonairs, which are really, really annoying, but I just get a safe switch in into Blastoise here to use Ice Beam. Ice Beam is enough to take down the first Dragonair, and next up is the second one. Luckily, I do get a Freeze. Lance uses it for Restore, but eventually it does end up going down. Dragonite even ends up going down after a couple of Ice Beams, and last up is Aerodactyl at level 58. I'm thinking at this point that one Surf is enough for one hit KO, but Aerodactyl hangs on with just a little bit of HP as it ends up going for a full restore. As I go for another surf, I get hit with a hyper beam, but one more surf is enough to take it down. Well, with that, there's just one more battle left, and that would be the champion. The champion leads off with a Pidgeot at level 59, so I lead off with Jolteon at level 50, and I end up going for Thunderbolt. Of course, it gets healed up and then uses Sand Attack a ton, so I end up missing, but eventually I am able to take it down. Next out is Rhydon at level 59, and I'm 99% sure the earthquake's coming, so I switch into Gyarados, so I dodge the earthquake and use surf to take it out. Next out is Alakazam, and this is extremely funny. I just get a crit earthquake to take it down, so that's a huge threat out of the way. Next out is his own Gyarados, and I don't really have a safe switch in for Jolteon, so unfortunately I have to let my own Gyarados go down as I switch into Jolteon. Jolteon's able to one-shot the Gyarados and is able to get off some damage onto Arcanine before it ends up going down. The only mon I have left is my Blastoise, so I switch it out, get hit with a critical extreme speed, doing a ton of damage as I take down Arcanine with a surf. Last out's Venusaur and Obviously, it looks like I'm gonna go down here, but I get a critical hit with Ice Beam. 
So the answer is yes. Yes, you can be Pokemon Fire Red with only shiny Pokemon. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This took a very long time to make, and I hope you all enjoyed. If you do want to see another shiny run, remember to subscribe and like the video to let me know that you liked it, or just leave a positive comment or something. Just let me know. Give me some feedback on this video on how I can improve for next time. Honestly, though, thank you for watching this far. If you're hearing me right now, obviously you're watching to the very, very end, so I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys next time. Follow me on Twitter, please. I'll follow you back, I promise.